Please welcome Roger Waters. Bonjour tout le monde. We are very happy and proud to have you in this room. Um, we'll try to understand together how this concert came about. Um, Dark Side of the Moon will be a large part of the show, not only, but a large part. Uh, it's the first concept album, concept uh, album of the history of the music. Um, it's also the first Pink Floyd album you completely wrote. Uh, what place does it have in your, in your heart, tell me? Uh, well, Dark Side of the Moon, I think, was um, the final coming together of uh, the four talents of the four of us who were involved in the band. Uh, it, it was a, a piece that we had been working slowly towards through the preceding albums, through Omegoma and Metal and with uh, songs like Echoes and things like that. And in Dark Side of the Moon, uh, we finally achieved the uh, synthesis, if you like, of the um, creative and, and talents that were in the band. and, and uh, it is a very complete work that um, still sounds quite fresh today, so I'm really looking forward to uh, doing it live. It'll yeah. Be fun. Yeah, this that's how I don't know. We'll be playing, uh, we'll be playing during the second part of the concerts. Yeah. Uh, what is your program for the first part? Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what all the songs are. I, I wrote a list out um, yesterday. Is it Monday today? Uh, yeah. 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 Yesterday. Uh, and uh, so I have a list of about. I suppose uh, 15 or 16 songs and uh, I will rehearse all of those songs with my band and then we will decide uh, what we're gonna what we're gonna put in the first half. A, a lot of it, I suspect quite a lot of it will be uh, stuff that I performed a few years ago when I was on the road but I'm doing uh, hopefully four songs that I have not done before. A couple of old Pink Floyd songs and a couple of new songs. Um, Nick Mason will be at your side uh, for a few songs in these concerts. He will. <laughs> How best do you describe your complicity that goes from the school benches? How what? Your, your, your complicity with him. Describe it to us. Well, obviously, he's the co-pilot. Yeah. You know? I'm in the left seat and he's... Actually, he flies and I don't. But, um, Nick and I are very old friends and um, uh, he played... Um, set the controls with me on my last tour when I played in London and then of course at Live 8 last summer when, we, when the four of us played together on stage. Uh, uh, it was great, it was really good fun and he and I sp spend a lot of time together, you know, we go on holiday together with our families and uh, so I really look forward to working with him on this. I had really decided that I wasn't going to work this summer until, uh, until the MagniCore thing was suggested to me and uh, the idea of doing Dark Side of the Moon and uh, the fact that it's on um, 14 juillet, évidemment, mm -hmm. um, was interesting to me. And so uh, I sort of think, well, maybe that sounds like fun, you know, and it could be, uh, it could be a really good gig and I could work with Nick and we could do this thing which I've never done. I haven't done Dark Side of the Moon live since 1974. Last question. To perform a concert uh, on the 14 juillet yeah. in France uh, during uh, the centennial of the French Grand Prix, um, what frame of mind will you be in? Um, well, you know, um, Bastille Day is important to everyone in the world because it reminds us of the Declaration des Droits de l'Homme on end of August the 10th the following year. And, uh, you know, when for the first time um, anyone establish the idea that individual human beings have rights and I think that's fundamentally important idea that, that um, your revolution gave us and that together with you know the American Constitution from whatever um, those are very important documents and ones that we need to be carefully rereading now you know particularly the current administration in the United States and and uh, and my government in England who seem to have lost the plot slightly I have to say maybe a bit Hello, Roger. Hi. Uh, I'm Roman Decoret from uh, Best Corner magazine. And uh, I wanted to know um, who you're going to be playing with. Uh, who are the guys, the guys playing with you? The band? Yeah. Um, well, it's the, it's the usual band, except I'm, I'm still, I've come down to a couple of people whose names I'm not going to mention yet who, uh, for the lead guitar player. But everybody else is who I've always used. Graham Broad, Andy Fairweather Lowe, um, uh, Snowy White, John Karen, my son Harry, Katie Kassoon, um, Pat Arnold, um, 
Carol. Um, don't, don't that, that's about it. Uh, it's a different saxophone player this time, a guy called Ian Ritchie, who's a, um, who I've worked with in record production in the past, but his main love is the tenor saxophone. So, um, that's it. Do you have uh, enough uh, material in stock for a new, a new album like the pros and cons of which I can? Or? I do, yeah. I have, uh, I must have a, a dozen songs that I've recorded in various stages of development and uh, there's definitely one album somewhere in there clawing its way to the surface to, and hopefully it will escape shortly. Uh, there may even be two albums, that may be why I haven't finished anything. It may be that there's one political record and, uh, and one, you know, record that would be more like a sequel to the pros and cons of hitchhiking and that it would be more about relationships and sex and love and all of that. The other side of the human affair. I've heard stories that you have bought some racing cars, like a voiture de sport. In fact, I still have one Ferrari at home. I've got a, a Dino, a 246 GT Spider. Um, which I keep in a sort of warm garage because it's such a beautiful little motor car and I, I love it but, and I rarely use it. But uh, no, the man with the, um, with the great passion for motor racing is Nick Mason, who's, who will be playing drums with me on for And he, uh, his father, Roland Hill Barclay Mason, made uh, a series of wonderful uh, films for the Shell Film Unit uh, uh, on the history of motor racing, which I'm sure a lot of people in this room will know. Um, and he used to race um, blown 29 uh, four and a half litre Bentleys uh, you know, as an amateur, the, the old Le Mans Bentley. And Nick d got, got that um, um, bug from his father. And he, when I first met him, I remember he had one car then. It was, a thing, it was an Austin Nippy, which is an Austin 7, but it had a fishtail and it was a sort of little tiny pretend racing car. And very soon, when we were at college, I remember him going and spending his grant on a one-and-a-half-litre Aston International, 1929 Aston Martin International. And from then on, every time he made a few, few quid from rock and roll, he spent it on cars. And he's got an incredible collection of cars now, which he will tell you about. I, know he's, I think he's coming um, later to do some press on this thing. And he has an extraordinary collection. I think you'll have to do a, a short picture okay. with everybody. I think we were standing next to there, so everybody bring it over there. Thank you.